in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed just because a fisherman can come and catch the fish, just because someone can catch the bird in the air, does not mean flying or swimming properly should not be land. The fish lives in that reality and some of them have the privilege of living an excelling life as far as their habitat is concerned. Unless and until a fisherman comes. When a fisherman comes, the ability to swim and swim fast may not be necessary again because the net was so designed in a way that the greatest skill can still fall prey. Are we together? However, in the world of the fish, the fish that cannot move will not survive. So he says, I returned and I saw under the sun that even though under normal circumstances, the race should be to the swift. That means I have to settle the issues and the principles that work under normal circumstances. Then now outsource an advantage that can help me still stand under unusual circumstances. Because unusual circumstances do not happen every day. Are we together now? Yes. The race, he connects it to speed. Battle. He connects it to strength, physical strength, spiritual strength, emotional strength, bread. Bread there talks of supplies and sufficiency. He connects it to wisdom. This is powerful. Riches and wealth. He connects it to understanding and favor. He connects it to skill. That means under normal circumstances, when you have speed, when you have strength, when you have wisdom, when you have understanding and you have skill, except the realm of the spirit fights you, nothing will defeat you on earth. This is what he's teaching. That a man, these are forces that produce victory. These are forces that produce excellence in life. Are we together? Every believer who wants to enjoy advancement and progress and an excelling life must pay attention to these things. Number one, speed. That means life is a function of time. You have to master the art of gaining time. Gaining time. Gaining time. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. Then he says to redeem the time because the days are evil. Most people do not understand how to gain advantage and dominion over time. You can lose money and gain it back. You can lose relationships and gain it back. But the greatest desire, as we learn from a dying man, is time. A dying man does not need to open another account. A dying man does not need another estate. He just needs an extension of time. Hezekiah was a king in chapter 38. When it was clear by the word of the prophet that he was going to die, his request was time. Extend my time. Hallelujah. Are we together? Someone say speed. It is very important to learn and understand the principles that make for speed. Dominion over time is genuine dominion. No matter what you dominate over, if you lose control over time, because the unit of destiny is time. Number two, strength. The battle to the strong. You must learn the spiritual principles that give men capacity and stamina and strength. 
please pay attention everybody say strength one more time say strength did your Bible not say if you turn aside in the day of battle it says your strength is small you have strength but your strength is small the battle when you have battles before you you need strength emotional strength spiritual strength are we together now Jesus got to Gethsemane and at that point it was not a miracle he needed at that point it was not the power to heal the sick that he needed what he needed to carry him over to the cross was strength listen carefully what made Jesus Christ fall and could not reach Golgotha that the they had to bring an African a black man are we together now Simon of Cyrene to take him it was the absence of strength it was not the absence of relationship with a father the father it was not the absence of a sincere heart he needed to go and purchase redemption for us but even as a human out of the assistance of the spirit he lost strength and a man had to assist him listen to me your journey in life will be a disaster until you master the spiritual dynamics that make for the arrival and the maintenance of strength did the bible not say has thou not known has thou not seen the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth that he does not faint neither is there weariness is that true he says there is no searching of his understanding and then he says even the young men will fall and the youths will be weary they will utterly fall he says but they that wait upon the lord what will they what is the advantage they shall renew that means you will fail in life if you do not understand and master the principles that make for strength. Hallelujah. You won't believe that years ago, I used to do a little of, I, I, I was an athlete. I used to run a lot. Hallelujah. A lot. And that passion came from a punishment. Hallelujah. We were punished for coming late to the field and they asked us to go around two times or how many times seven times or so and that punishment some collapsed by the wayside they gathered all of us who came late and they asked us to keep running until we stop and we ran seven times across the field many other people fell down it was only two of us that remained because of that they now introduced marathon to the interhouse because they said wow so that means these people have this potential strength hallelujah when you watch these great athletes marathon people kenyans and all these people you see that they they have mastered how to conserve energy they can run for three hours and it looks like they will fall down until they get to the last round suddenly an energy from nowhere there are many people who will be jogging before the, they blow the whistle they will not even go around twice are we together strength do you know how to sustain strength do you know how to sustain emotional strength do you know how to sustain physical strength this is not where we are going to I'm only introducing my teaching let's go to the next part back to the scripture please it says neither bread to the wise hello that means every time your house and your household is bankrupt of bread supplies sufficiency what you need is to access wisdom there is a relationship between bread and wisdom when you lack wisdom you will lack bread number four riches riches to men of understanding riches just because you have bread does not mean you have riches are we together now yes you can get bread through the wisdom of relationships but it doesn't mean you are rich necessarily it takes understanding it says in all thy getting get understanding and then he says favor to men of skill i've taught you on the laws of favor 
and one of them is value and competence that when you are valuable you can schedule seasons of favor that will reproduce themselves in your life again and again let me recap on this one last time speed strength wisdom understanding and skill show me a man who has all of this I give you a guarantee under normal circumstances I have shown you a man who is victorious do you believe this from the secular system every single one you see excelling with greatness and glory as far as we see from an earth standpoint these were some of the ingredients that they combined hallelujah they found the keys that make for speed they found the keys that make for strength they found the keys that bring and sustain wisdom they found the keys that make for an understanding heart and indeed they built themselves to be skillful our first prayer point tonight is that God himself and by his spirit will cause you that all of the the knowledge the level of light that will command these resources to your life I want you to pray while you are seated Lord everything that makes for my accessing speed the level of spiritual illumination that will bring speed to my life strength to my life wisdom to my life understanding to my life and then finally skill to my life i obtain grace someone is praying in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i obtain grace i want to be able to gain advantage over time i want to have the emotional the spiritual and the physical strength to be able to stand through the vicissitudes of life someone is praying in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I obtain grace that which will give me wisdom and bring bread for me and for my household sufficiency all wise I obtain grace and then understanding that will bring riches indeed durable riches that comes with righteousness and finally everything that will make me skillful enough to command favor to my destiny I obtain grace hallelujah hallelujah have you been blessed journey with me now my teaching starts now mark chapter 10 mm. Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Feel this love You're about to learn a lesson that will change your life Come with me, ladies and gentlemen, as we explore the life of one very interesting personality in the Bible, and you will see why I taught you what I just taught you. 10, 17, Mark. Beginning from verse 17. Now watch. The Bible talks about a gentleman who came to Jesus. And when he was gone forth, the Bible says there came one running and when you read your Bible the Bible calls that gentleman a rich young ruler everybody say after me rich young ruler hmm. so a gentleman who is simply identified as a rich young ruler Pay attention now. Three very important descriptions. When he was gone forth, the Bible says there came one running, running to him, the him being Jesus, and knelt to him and asked him, he said, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Next verse. 
Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. 19. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor your father and your mother. Jesus is speaking to him now. Hear his reply. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all this I have observed from my youth. Don't forget the Bible called him young. So he was still young. 21. Jesus beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and take up your cross and follow me. Please go back to 17. We'll deal with these other verses later on. Back to 17. The Bible says this young man was number one, rich. Everybody say rich. Based on what we studied, rich also meant wise. Is that true? Number two, the Bible says he was a ruler. He had influence that the government acknowledged his wisdom because with wisdom also comes promotion. And then the interesting part of it is that he was young. Now, let me tell you the truth. The word rich and young hardly go together because it takes time to learn the principles that make for lasting wealth. Pay attention now. Are we together? So when you find the word rich and young combined in the life of a gentleman, already that gentleman should command your respect. Rich, young. If the Bible stopped there, we'll, we'll visit the verses later. We can, we can go back so that I, I see myself as I'm talking. If the Bible, listen carefully, if the Bible just stopped at rich and young, that was already enough commendation for the guy. Rich and young, when did he start learning the principles? Who mentored him to have gained mastery over life and become rich at a very young age? Are we together? Then the Bible now says ruler. You know what it means to be a ruler? You want to understand the principles of rulership, you must be faithful in stewardship. Matthew 25, he gave unto one this talent. The reward for their faithfulness was that he made them rulers over kingdoms. So when the Bible says this young man is a ruler, it gives us an extended understanding of the level of excellence and dexterity of this young man. A rich, young ruler. Rich through wisdom. And understanding young dominion over time that means speed was at work in his life there were things he had conquered early are we together now and then the Bible called him a ruler meaning he was recognized by the government of the day they saluted the investment of wisdom upon him and exalted him to a position where everyone within the city and the area knew that truly favor was at work in him now pay attention to this gentleman. I don't know about you, but most people, this is their testimony and this is what they covet. Rich, they want to gain time to make it happen fast and they want influence. Here is a man, ladies and gentlemen, who access what we just read in Ecclesiastes chapter nine. He traded these forces of the kingdom and as a result, his life and his results showed that at a very young age. Now, I don't know how young this guy was, but we know that from the time Jesus started ministry, he started ministry at 30, he finished at 33 and a half. Are we together? Yes. Let's see a few things about this gentleman that are very instructive aside from being rich and young you see that this gentleman was a very very humble person are we together because how do you have wealth you have favor you have gained time and then you are a ruler and the bible says he ran to jesus and the moment he saw jesus the bible says he knelt down knelt down rich knelt down young with dominion over time and then knelt down even as a ruler over many 
And then, very intelligent young man, do you know what his question was? He never said, give me eternal life. He said, what shall I do? He was a responsible person. Very responsible young man. He didn't say, give me. He already knew that, look, life was a product of cause and effect. He would not just sit down and assume. He said, I, let me know my responsibility. Good master, I acknowledge you. Even though I am a ruler, even though I am rich, even though I am young, I am still humble and I am a learner because he called him master. Only a student will call another master. Look at this kind of young man. If you had a brother or a son or a husband like this young man, you would be happy for the rest of your life. And yet, this man came to Jesus seeking something he did not have. He said, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? In other words, as far as this realm is concerned, I have taken advantage of the knowledge that brings speed, the knowledge that brings strength, the knowledge that brings bread, the knowledge that brings riches, and the knowledge that brings favor. My concern is not within the realm. I have conquered this realm, and I did that fast. Now, I hear that there is an advantage beyond this realm, and I am aware that there are things that can happen in this realm that can destroy everything. So I now want to start investing in a realm higher than this. What must I do? What a young man. Pay attention, you are learning something tonight. How does a young man conquer this realm? He demonstrated that you can gain time, you can be rich, you can have influence, be a young man of integrity, a cool-headed young man. He would come and kneel down. You know what it takes to kneel down when you have money? You know what it takes to kneel down when you have influence? You know what it takes to kneel down when you have an advantage of time? And he said, good master, I acknowledge there is something you know that I do not know. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 18, I love this. Jesus said unto him, why do you call me good? There is none who is good but, is, but God. You know what he's saying? He's saying, you cannot, with respect to what you are saying, you don't call any man good. In other words, you have discerned something about me that I'm not just an ordinary person. You are dealing with matters of eternity and you are coming to me. That means you acknowledge that I am God because you are calling me good. 19. Jesus now answered him and said, All of these commandments, you know them. He tested him against the law. And then the man replied, verse 20. He said, Sincerely, I will not lie to you. And I don't mean to be proud. I have observed this from my youth. When a young man says, I observed it from my youth, how old was he when he started living it? Because as at the time he was talking with Jesus, he was still young. Even if you use the age of Jesus to gauge him, he was still within his thirties. And this man had conquered life and he was saying that I started that journey right from when I was a child. And from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Are we together? And so he told Jesus happily and convincingly that by the grace of God I have kept this. 21 is where the problem starts. Jesus beholding him loved him. I love Jesus. Before he would lash out, he would commend what you have done sincerely. He looked at him and said, truly, I'm impressed. Really very impressed. But here is my message tonight. One thing thou lackest with speed with strength with wisdom with understanding with skill alongside the supporting results showing and he comes to Jesus and Jesus said you have done everything well but there is one thing that you lack and look at what Jesus said. I'm sure the man was attentive. Wow, me, there is nothing I would lack that I cannot trade all these forces to get it. So reveal to me. Jesus said, no, if I tell you what you lack, you will not believe it. So I am going to use a test to reveal it to you. I am going to put you through a situation right now that will reveal to you that you truly lack it. 
Are you ready for the test? He says, go thy way. Sell whatsoever thou hast and give it to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Then when you are done, come. Then take up your cross, the cross, and follow me. 22. It's not his fault. And he was sad at that saying, for he went away very grieved. What was the basis of his grief? For he had great possession. Please follow this story. Remember where we started. The race is not to the swift, the battle to the strong. Here is a young man that passed our test that under normal circumstances you would look at. There, there were few people in the Bible that were like that gentleman. Men like Joseph, men like Daniel, they excelled at a level and they were all young when that happened. Other people like Abraham, you know, they were idol worshippers for a long time. Abraham wasted over 75 years before he answered the call, struggled again till about 100 before he really started, you know, working purpose and so on and so forth. But here is a young man that met Jesus himself and the Bible called him rich, the Bible called him young, the Bible called him a ruler. And then Jesus began to probe him and even Jesus himself was impressed at the level and the extent to which he had taken advantage of the resources and the forces, the laws of the kingdom to create an excelling life. But he speaks to him and prophetically he speaks to a generation he says one thing thou lackest you do not lack speed clearly your result shows that you have it you do not lack wisdom you do not lack strength you do not lack understanding in fact you are skillful listen to me that young man that stood before jesus was not a person that young man was a generation a generation that for some reason had been able to maneuver their way through understanding to conquer life under normal circumstances that young man was a representation of a generation and he came and stood before jesus you would think by the human standpoint this gentleman was flawless because generations past had a problem with speed Generations past had a problem with strength. Generations past had a problem with wisdom. Generations past had a problem with understanding. Generations past had a problem with skill. Here is a generation that is a correction and an improvement of every other one standing. Rich, young ruler. If it is wealth, we have found the principles and you see young people who are able to rise to positions of riches and wealth with the dignity of kingdom integrity. Today around the world you have young people who are teenagers and yet they have accomplished strides that people would, it took people decades, rich, people who were able to gain time. You will see a young man at 25 and he does not know what to do with his life again because the journey of 100 years, he compressed it in 10 years and achieved everything he would have done in 100 years. At 25, he's already a CEO of a global conglomerate. At 25, he's already making impact across the world. Young. Young. And then ruler. Influence. Influence such a young man having tremendous influence i can tell you how he became rich i can tell you how he gained time i can tell you how he became a ruler that was an advantage of the forces in ecclesiastes chapter 9. don't ask him how he became wealthy don't ask him how he was able to gain time don't ask him how he was able to rise supernaturally. All of these results are controlled by these forces of advantage. Any man who sustains the knowledge that brings speed, stamina and capacity, wisdom, understanding and skill has gained that which tames life like a dog. So this generation with all the achievements 
and then responsible also you see attributes of character humility generations past suffered pride they had all these things but they were arrogant and when we learned from them we said we will correct it now the young man comes as a correction of many failures past believing that if he stood before Jesus Jesus will say wow you are even talking of eternity it means everything is fine but now he says you have kept all this and I give you credit for it but one thing thou lackest and I'm not going to tell you I will put you through a situation that will reveal to you by yourself the one thing that you lack the Bible says he loved him do not forget so he was not being sarcastic this was a young man that had done commendably well one thing thou lackest he gave him two principal tests number one go thy way and sell whatsoever thou hast do you know what that meant to sell everything you have then when you get the money he says give it to the poor he would have said give it to the state or give it to a global society that will recognize you and you can use your gift as a ladder to your influence now he's saying put all of that value and give it to the poor the poor do not have the capacity to tell you thank you they do not have the capacity to even reward you the poor sometimes because of mental bankruptcy may not even appreciate what you are doing he said give it to the poor then he says when you are empty come back to me and then take up the cross not your cross the cross and follow me and the man said what kind of man are you i already called you good master i came here respecting you you want to destroy and frustrate me the bible says he was grieved that statement revealed what was left that statement revealed what could cancel out the excellency of every other thing the Bible says, for he had great possession. His pain was not because of the absence of results. His pain was because of the excellency of results. Good master. Hallelujah. So the first test, let's deal with it, was sell what you have and give it to the poor. What exactly was Jesus trying to examine in that man? Number one was the heart condition. The heart condition. There was something about the heart of this young man. Even though dexterous in every sense of the word, Jesus looked through him and discerned the heart of that young ruler, which represents the heart of a generation. Luke chapter 12, please. Give us from verse 16. The heart condition. Another parable that Jesus spake and told them that the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful say results jesus is teaching the parable of someone now another rich man who had results 17. the bible says and he thought within himself saying what shall i do because i have no room to bestow my fruits my goodness just think for one moment crowds coming church increasing your name and your credibility rising i do not even have room i don't know where to store the fruits of these results happening and here's what the man did 18. he said this is what i will do i will pull down my bands and build greater and i will bestow all my fruits and my goods 19. He says, and I will say to my soul. You see the problem now? It was not the building, the tearing down and the building. But something was happening within his soul. Soul, thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thy ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. 20. But God said to him, thou fool, this night... Thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? Very, very, very powerful. The heart condition. 
Let's go to verse 31. Let's jump for the sake of time. Go to verse 31. The Bible says, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh -huh. Next verse. It says, fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Next verse. It says, sell all you have and give arms. Provide for yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupted. Let's read verse 34 together. One, two, read. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be. So you now see that the reason why the young man felt pain was that his heart was connected to that treasure. So when Jesus said, give it all up, listen, Jesus did not meant, he didn't mean literally that he should go and sell everything. It was a test to show him the condition that as much as he had achieved this, unknown to him, his heart had been connected to these things. Now, you need to understand that this was not a bad gentleman. This was not a lawless gentleman. The finest of the breed within a generation. And yet, after going through the vetting system of Jesus, the conclusion of Jesus is that even you, the best and the greatest and the brightest, you are still found wanting. This is a message for a generation. That young man represented the finest within a generation. Commanded results in all spheres, influence, anointing, grace, power, wisdom, and respect, honor for the fathers, the passion to still learn some more. I do not know about you, but if I find a young man like this, or if my life becomes like this, I may give myself a little pat at the back and say, well done, you have done well. Your life is a worthy correction of the mistakes past. But when he stands before Jesus, Jesus says, it is true you have done well, but make no mistakes and don't be carried by pride. There is something your success has done to you that you are not even aware of. Now let me test you and leave you with the verdict by yourself that something has happened to your heart by reason of your treasure. The generations past, something happened to their heart by reason of insufficiency, by reason of lack of revelation, by reason of ignorance. And right now, here comes a generation that is about to suffer because of abundance. Abundance of revelation, abundance of the apostolic, abundance of the prophetic, abundance of wealth, abundance of skill. Whoever told you that plenty does not destroy? Our focus as a generation has been to eradicate lack, spiritual lack, and so on and so forth. But we are about to make a mistake as a generation. We are, uh, we are becoming, as a people, the rich, young ruler. People are conquering realms of wealth. What used to be a problem, many parents are amazed today at the way God is lifting their children, lifting young people from preachers to businessmen. You see young people in their 20s, are we together? Doing all kinds of things, building schools, building hospitals, rich and young. Finally, a generation have been able to match these two words together. It was a difficult thing to find rich and young. You may find poor and young, then you find rich and elderly. But a generation said, no, we know the keys. We have mastered the keys. We have listened to the fathers and they have granted us the privilege of seeing their scars. And we have been able to correct where they missed it. Now we have learned. Oh, a father will come and tell you, listen, I went for wisdom, but I did not find the principles that make for speed. My deficiency is that I did not have speed, even though I had strength. Another will say I had strength, but I didn't have wisdom. Another will say I had wisdom but I stopped there I didn't have understanding others will say I had strength but I didn't have skill 
our generation has listened to the father sufficiently we have listened to the holy spirit sufficiently and now we have come in the similitude of the rich young ruler as a man of god rich young ruler wealth time impact influence and then the saving grace of that young man is that he still remembered to run to Jesus. And when he came, he said, good master, based on my accrediting myself, I think I am all right. And truly my mind is now thinking of eternal things, but vet me. And Jesus tells that generation, well done. You tried. You have done well. Thank you for not disappointing. Thank you for making the fathers to be able to see you as an improvement of them. However, one thing thou lackest. And here is a test. Go and sell everything. Close down the ministry. Trade your influence. Shut down everything. And he says, carry your cross and follow me. And the man said, no, it took time to build this ministry. My entire reputation and my self-worth is now on this ministry. If it goes away, what do I have left? My entire family and generation is proud of me because of this anointing. It now leaves me, what do I have left? And Jesus says, aha, uh -huh. I now see the reason why you are fasting. There is nothing wrong with the fasting except that your fasting is because of the fear of losing this anointing to lose relevance. All of the, you are doing a very good work. You have, you have learned that fasting and prayer, that consecration and Bible study, you have learned that honor to the fathers, all of these keys, but un, unbeknownst to you, the entire journey has changed from him to you not with your knowledge i will pray like never before i understand rich young ruler i will study the bible like never before i understand rich young ruler i will practice the principles of honor like never before rich young ruler i will be a diligent man with character a diligent woman with character i understand rich young ruler i will burn the night candles till i get every knowledge it takes to excel in ministry and in my field rich young ruler i will break that course and become the first billionaire the first anointed man of god in my family i understand rich young ruler congratulations but there is a message young ruler i congratulate you for being rich we do not downplay it i congratulate you for gaining time young i congratulate you prophetically for contending to such level of influence because for you to be a ruler you must have traded your talent well and produced more. And the master honored you and said, you become a ruler over kingdoms. Authority, notoriety, influence. And he comes to Jesus and says, in fact, to show you I am not distracted by my wealth, let's talk about issues of eternity. Does that look like our generation? Lord, I love you. I'm not even distracted by the money. I'm not even distracted by the fame. I love you, Jesus. I'm, I'm focused on eternity. Good master, I know that I'm rich. I know that I'm young. I know that I'm a ruler, but I come to you. Let's not talk about wealth. Let's not talk about time. Let's not talk about influence. Let's talk about eternity. And Jesus says, leave the issue of eternity. I need to address something about your heart. You are sincere, but the side effect of having plenty, something has happened to you. And you will never believe if I told you, if Jesus just said, you have a problem with your heart, you say no. Remember, when Jesus told him, have you kept the law? He said, I'm blameless, I've kept the law. But he said, there's something. I will have to create a scenario in your life that will bring you to a position where you are forced to admit. So, he gives you a very strange instruction like go and empty your bank account 
and you say, I didn't hear you in the name of Jesus. God does not work like that. I rebuke this kind of demonic spirit by November asking me to empty my account. It can be the will of God. I can tell you it's not the account. He's showing you something within your heart. Are we together? Or a man of God comes and instead of calling you Apostle Joshua Selman, he says, Josh or Selman. And something within you says, ah, this man, do you know how long I fast? Are you stupid? Where did you keep the titles? It's not an ordinary title. I know you are sincere, but it's a revelation. What if you go for a program somewhere and they're acknowledging people that you raised and they forget about you outside? That feeling within you and say, listen, it's not pride or nobody should disrespect me. This is what Jesus wants to work on. <laughs> Rich, young ruler. How about what happens to you when someone downplays your anointing, demeans your anointing? So what is there? What you are preaching is not oh, the healing. How are we even sure it's sure? The, the, how are we sure that the person really got up from the wheelchair? Show us before and after. And you don't know me, oh. Uh -huh. It sounds very spiritual because you are mentioning heaven in it. Jesus still said, don't deceive me with talk of eternity. Come to me and let me do something to you. And he says the only proof is go and sell. You know what it means to sell? To sell means to part way. If you part way with the goods and you have the money you did not sell. He says give the money so that you are left with nothing. And then when you are left with nothing. If you still have the stamina to come back to me when you have nothing. You are deserving of following me. Do you know? Listen. Listen. Do you know what your cross is? To come and carry your cross? To carry your cross means to be so focused you are willing to endure the shame. You are willing to endure the inconvenience that it takes to follow Jesus. Please hear me. As flawless as this generation looks, as excellent as we look, the master is still saying, be careful. One thing thou lackest. This generation no longer has a problem with prayer. God has helped us. We no longer have a problem with fasting. God has helped us. We no longer have a problem with ignorance of scripture. We are only rising higher, not starting again. God has helped us. This generation does not have a problem with anointing. God has helped us. This generation does not have a problem with wealth. There are people, there are tech giants who are rising. There are all kinds of people. I met a young man one time, 23. He's, he was an associate professor, 23. 23 years. I couldn't believe it. Associate professor from a reputable university, not, not just uh, 23. Rich, young ruler. Man of God, koinonia, great ministry, global impact. Rich, young ruler. How about young people who are starting up banks? How about young people who are starting up tech firms? How about the prophetic that is sweeping Africa? How about the apostolic? The truth is that even the fathers respectfully are seeing that the hand of God is upon this generation. God has helped us. It used to be that you find someone with anointing, no character. Or you find somebody with prayer, no word. Or you find somebody with character, but no grace. Or you find somebody who, who emphasizes spirituality and no balance. Now you have a generation that is balanced. We have come rich, young ruler. This is a prophetic message that God gave me. That young man you see was not just a young man who came. He was an adumbration of a generation that represented perfection. Many generations have not listened, but one generation has finally listened and he got it right. Because where many generations missed it is that they forgot the issue of eternity. Here comes this one. In addition to being rich, in addition to being young, in addition to influence, he said, I still place my heart on eternal things. What else is there? You would think that is 100 over 100. Here comes the marker himself. 
He says, young generation, you have done well, but one thing. Let's go back to the heart. More than the prayers. Let's go back to the heart. What is really fueling the desire to have more likes? What is really fueling the desire to have more invitations? What is really fueling the desire for more expansion in Koinonia? What is really fueling the desire for more money? Oh God is for your glory, I agree. Thank God is for my glory. I'm the one who's for his glory. I'm looking at your heart now and I'm saying let's go back to the drawing board. One thing thou lackest. The first thing you lack is that in a bid to, to operate these forces of the kingdom, your heart veered off from him and came back to you. Let me tell you the truth. Please hear me. Spirituality has become a product. The same way business, the same way real estate, you can use spirituality as a product. And just because it is spirituality, it does not mean it, it can so deceive because you are you are trading with a product called spirituality if you do drugs they will catch you immediately if you do whatever it is real estate and so on and so forth but what if the product you are selling is spirituality you will think that because the product you are importing is spirituality it automatically means that your heart is right spirituality can be a product that deceives you jesus said if that is what you have sell it get the money from it give the poor and come to me leave it and focus on me it can be ministry it can be conferences it can be a name it can be a desire for expansion there is nothing particularly wrong but he's saying the problem number one is that where your treasure is that's where your heart is let me tell you when god opened me up to this i prayed and i cried my heart to god i said lord before i preach this message let's start with me first i would not be stupid to assume that this message has nothing to do with me this is how many people deceive themselves until they do not rise. When God gives you a strong message, start it with yourself. Don't let preacher and pulpit fool you. Rich, young ruler. I get over 800 text messages in one day. When I gave people access to the email to be able to reach me, we had over 6,000 emails within 24 hours rich young ruler by the time people acknowledge you ah, that's him that's him there joshua selman that's him there the woman of god that's him there the man of god subconsciously you know we have a way of acting like i don't like it my heart is just with jesus christ you know the cross and all of that and sometimes we are even saying remember the bible says the heart can deceive its owner too that means your heart can deceive you. You do not even know. It's not about doing it intentionally. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Every once in a while, you will not believe what I'm telling you, but it's true. Every once in a while, God allows for opportunities to test that rich young ruler. Every, without fail, once in a while, you will go for a meeting where you are to preach and suddenly there will not be a chair for you outside and they'll say please wait let me go and ask the pastor who are you the protocol guy says who are you and you're like who am i i was him do you know who? look at my car uh-huh rich young ruler that five minutes was a test very quickly you will come and preach powerfully and people will be blessed god will honor you because you have done well but when you go back to god you say let's deal with that thing that thing you felt has the power to grow let's kill it before it grows to destroy you a cancer cell a cancer cell cannot be seen by the ordinary eye but it can grow so fast you begin to see a physical projection in a human body is that true so the first test, go and sell and give to the poor. The poor, maybe give to the government so they can give me a national award. I understand that. 
Maybe give to people who can edge my name behind a school or a building somewhere. I did a little project one time for, you know, some places, communities, and they put my name boldly somewhere. And I remember when I was told and I got to see it, I said, uh-huh, you see it now. We will lie and pretend like those things don't matter. And that heart, that cancer that is lying quietly, waiting for the right condition. Please hear me. God is speaking to all of us, but he's speaking to this generation. We have done well. Anybody who says we have not done well is lying. Jesus looked at the young ruler and said, you have done well. However, before you, you mark your script and give yourself an award by yourself, the master vets you. And he says, you have done well. However, one thing, everybody say one thing, one thing thou lackest. And I will reveal it to you through a test. Test number one, sell your reputation. Test number one, sell your sense of relevance. The word sell there means to put yourself in a position where you are willing to part ways with it. That means do not derive your relevance, your sense of worth just from these things. When you sell a thing, you've parted ways with it. Are you willing? You cannot imagine the kind of lust and attachment we have to anointing, to power, to ministry. This thing is subconscious. You must be able to jealously guard whatever God gives you. But sometimes we do not know that our hearts slip away in deception. And while I can be praying, oh God, increase koinonia in the name of Jesus, bring souls. My heart is saying something else. Oh God, let my reputation not fail. Let people not think that I'm backslidden. Make sure if we are 10,000 or 15,000, take us to 30,000 in the name of Jesus. Your heart is saying, let it be that there's somebody. Are, see, let me tell you the truth. When your mouth is praying, bar, your heart is also praying. God can hear both. Lord, give me wealth for your kingdom in the name of Jesus. We declare that we'll build hospitals, we'll fund mission agencies, and your heart is praying a prayer. Lord, I've suffered. Before my mother dies, let her know that she had a child. For God's sake, that will wipe the shame. And God is listening to all of them. Unfortunately, your heart speaks loudest in the realm of the spirit. The voice of your heart will shut your mouth a thousand times. Is God speaking to someone? where your heart is that is where your treasure is so test number one go and sell and give to the poor colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3 please pay attention i want to reveal something very deep for you now colossians 3 says if ye then be risen with christ it says seek those things which are above where christ seated on the right hand of god we're reading to 3 verse 2 set your affection this is the meaning of what Jesus was telling that person. The rich young ruler. Paul now is teaching the church in Colossae. This is what Jesus meant by set everything. He said, set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. Verse 3. It says, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8. Let's read it together, please. Koinonia, ready? One to read. These people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their hearts. Is that in your Bible? How do you honor God with your lips? How do you draw nigh to him with your mouth? And the Bible says their heart is far from me. The greatest tool of a preacher is his mouth. The lips. The greatest tool of a leader is his mouth. His lips. You use words to create perceptions. And he says the problem is not your words. You are trying to sincerely be right. But the truth of the matter is that the problem is your heart. The problem is not our preaching. 
The problem is not our singing. The problem is not our eloquence and speaking. The problem is not the speech that you give that is so you, you dot the I's and cross the T's. Once it is your mouth and your lips, I don't have a problem with that. You have conquered that realm. But your heart is far away from me. Matthew 22, 37. Matthew 22, 37. Jesus said unto him, Koinonia, here it is. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. You see the problem of the rich fool? And with all thy mind. How do you love God with your heart? How do you love God with your soul? And how do you love God with your mind? Yet he says this is a command that you love the Lord. He says this is the first and greatest commandment. To get to a point where nothing, no one sustains the ability to steal away your passion for God not your desire to succeed not your desire to maintain the success that God has helped you to build let me tell you sincerely be believers if we are sincere anybody who pays the price to build anything valuable will have jealousy towards it are we together and you want to protect you want to preserve when you build a business you're not going to cross your hands and watch people mismanage your business to go down when God helps you to build a ministry, it is the joy of everybody. Right now, I am happy seeing tens of thousands across the world following and connecting. It is a joy to my heart. But you are still a rich young ruler. When you stand before Jesus, he will commend you. Joshua Selman, well done. Well done for traveling from nation to nation. Well done for helping people find Jesus. Jesus is the one speaking. And then he says, one thing thou lackest. It is up to you to argue with him and say, I don't care. And go back to become a lesson with your life for another generation that will correct your mistake. Or you can make up your mind. Even though the rich guy, I wish we could have part two of that story. Let's know what happened to the rich young Yula. Did he obey? Did he disobey? Because he was, a, he was an intelligent gentleman. I don't know what I would have done if I were the one who stood before Jesus. And he says, close down Koinonia. Transfer everything you have in your account. The bits that I have given you in life. Throw everything away. And then just when you think it's a prophetic message, you will say it's literal. It's not a parable. Let me tell you the first thing that will happen. In this generation, any of your friend who is a doctor will quickly carry you to the hospital. How fast? Quickly. They will say something has wrong. Something is wrong with this guy. Like Paul, they will say much learning has made you mad. You have you have read Greek and Hebrew, and it has squeezed out every sense out of your head. Now we know something is wrong. A therapist will look at you and say, "Don't be offended. You are not well." That's the most modest way of describing what is wrong with you. How do you sell your land, your car, and everything? And then you come to Jesus empty. You don't come full. When you come empty, he becomes your truest and only inheritance. When you come to him, he will tell you, my gift to you now is myself. If I give you a car, it's not really a gift. If I give you anointing, it's not really a gift. Your real gift. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. Hope I'm not too late.
the Bible says the young man left sorrowful 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 the same way you feel sorrowful when anybody tries to downplay your relevance the same way you feel sorrowful when anybody wants to trivialize your impact the same way you feel sorrowful when there is nobody to cheer you and say well done as legitimate and sincere as you are is a revelation of something about your heart I am your own till the day you will come Jesus I am your own. that I am your own. Listen to me. There are many people today who would rather die than to give up ministry. I know it's easy for us to talk and say I will give up ministry. You know, I've said it many times. When God gave me this sermon, I was thinking about my life and I had to say, do you really mean it? And I answered, I said, yes. Listen, this is not a call to irresponsibility. No. When you hear teachings like this, it's not to mean to be nonchalant with what God has given you. No. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. This is not an endorsement of laziness and carelessness and the absence of the press to maximize destiny. No. Do you not know that it's those who give up everything that have everything? Everything is him. This is the one thing our generation is missing. Our idol has become prayer as a product. Our idol has become fasting and nothing is wrong with it. Our idol has become Bible study. Our idol has even become going to church. Our idol has become Apostle Joshua Selman, prophets, teachers as wonderful as that is you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you for great is the measure of your I can lock myself for three days praying and here's what your heart is saying Lord I must be relevant I must be among those who matter and whatever the price is since knowledge has brought me to a point where it is prayer and fasting it is Bible study I will buy the books a gentleman called me and said he covenanted him with himself that he must finish one book every day. He's on a journey to accessing light. I said, congratulations, but tread with caution. Of reading many books, there is no end. And much study is only a weariness to the soul. So says the preacher, the man who has gotten to where you are going to. Can I tell you the truth? every move in the body of Christ began as a pure move but subtly we removed Jesus out of it and it became a problem corrected by the next move most people are not students of history that is why we do not understand the moves of God respectfully speaking almost every major denomination with all due respect and honor to the body of Christ it was when they started you would think that was the move that was it read your bible and read history the puritans and all through like that it was an improvement those who only knew the baptism of john when they found the holy ghost it was like a new move has come 
Azusa Street Revival and all of the moves of God. I mean, you could imagine those guys. It was a time of outpouring. The, read the book of read the, the book of um, First and Second Corinthians. It was at a time when the Holy Ghost was being poured on people. I mean, people were catching fire. Remember, in the book of Acts chapter 19, he came to the upper coast and he found certain disciples and he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since he believed? He said, we've not even heard if there be any Holy Ghost. He said, unto what then were you baptized? He said, unto the baptism of John. And he said, no, 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 no. The baptism of John was a baptism of repentance that you should believe on him who should come. And the Bible says they were baptized in the name of the Lord and he laid hands on them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak in tongues and they were 12. Would there be any move greater than that? How could they back down in your mind through history if you were in that room under William Seymour, the one-eyed evangelist, and you saw the power of God? Would there ever be any improvement again? Once upon the time in the body of Christ, you dare not correct the teachings of Kenneth Hagin because at that time, there were the apostolic voices upon the earth when they brought the revelation of the word and faith. I mean, it was fire. They had conferences for 30 days, 60 days non-stop. Yet there would be a generation that will still detect. Today, we can with all honor and respect look at Kenneth Hagin's teachings and sermons and say, well, we honor him as a father. A, B, C, D. Let me speak to my generation. There is a generation that is coming that will mark our script. Let me tell you the truth. It will be arrogance and foolishness to believe we are the final generation. Uh-uh. These little children you see running around, praying while they are two years old. Some of us were idol worshippers at two. Remember, they are becoming rich, young. Mama, young lady, you got, you got born again at age 30. Now your baby at age two is praying in tongues. Watch to see what that baby will become when he's 12. By the time he's 12, he will prophesy from morning till night. He will call your name. A time will come there will be no ignorance in the church. All shots will be equivalent to geos because of the level of light. But we must be careful. This apostolic and prophetic move across Africa is doing something wonderful but it's a double-edged sword it will only become a useful sword when jesus remains at the epicenter prophecies will fail apostolic activities will fail we can go from region to region i just returned from a nation and i mean the mighty things that god did there but i am ever conscious my heart my heart a time can come it will become more about our reputation than it is about the sincerity of the program William Seymour Kenneth Hagin and then the revival of the 60s the 70s and the 80s respectfully speaking and with every honor once upon a time a man in this nation Apostle Babalola, an apostle indeed. Relative to that man, some of us will be children. We will not even be his ushers. Some of those old men in the West and in every region really, some just were able to make it in history while others did not. But there were regions that had people. They would sit down like dead men in the room. They would see you and say, get a notebook, get a piece of paper. In 10 years time, this will happen to you. At the 15th year of your life, this one will happen to you. And yet today, with all due respect, we can look at them. And while we honor them, we can still see what was missing. Hallelujah. Many of us have had the privilege of having our fathers of faith in this nation and around the world open up their scars before us to tell us when we were your age, we missed it here. We missed it here. We missed it here. When I have the privilege of talking with some of the fathers and I see them praying and say, Apostle, we pray that you will last. I say amen with revelation. 
Amen, amen, amen. Because let me tell you, if you saw the way God used these people, you would not imagine there would never be another move again. The rich, young ruler is a prophetic typology of a generation that has done well on one hand, commendably well, well in revelation, well in diligence. I submit to you that there never has been a time in church history where men and women of God are passionate about the gospel like this. It, it is the truth. You, you do not know the sacrifices that the average man of God in this nation and across Africa makes per week as a demand on the grace of God upon their lives. Sacrifices of fasting, sacrifices of prayer, sacrifices of consecration, sacrifices of study. You enter the office of an average man of God, you think you enter the library. Books here. Yeah. He has not finished this one. He's, he has read to page five. He's coming there next week. He needs to balance up something. There's one Greek word he started checking that distracted him. He needs to watch a video to understand that Greek word. That is all it takes to make one sermon. And there are people who are willing to stretch that far. The rich young ruler was not lazy. The rich young ruler was not defiant to the laws of success. But Jesus comes to him and says, the first thing that is needful is while you are rising, while that impact is happening, people giving you everything that money can buy. Remember the man said he had great possessions. You can turn it to say he had great membership. You can turn it to say he had a great voice across the nations. It does not matter the heart. My precious generation, God is calling us again to re-examine our heart. There is no problem with the results. Some of us have mastered these results under normal circumstances like I started. There is no power in existence. You see, the principles that make for an excelling life are finite. You can gain hold of them with mastery. There are young people in this generation that will never be poor again. There are young people in this generation that will never have epileptic membership. I am telling you, the keys have been given. They are finite. Many of our generation, we are not afraid of losing a testimony of consistency with impact. The laws have been learned. However, that there is something that can come upon men and even though you have speed, something can come upon men even though you have might. Something can come upon men even though you have wisdom. Something can come upon men, even if you have understanding. Something can come upon men, even though you have skill. In fact, something can still come upon you, even while you are talking of eternity. The condition of the heart. It is the reason why God has delayed lifting many of us. Because the current state of our heart, please listen. God is speaking to someone because God wants to use you mightily but there is something he wants you to know I am saying this by the Spirit God is speaking to someone because the seasons that are coming if you can correct this heart condition indeed you will become that bride you will stand and you will last our generation will still lose it and be a lesson for the generations coming in spite of our preaching in spite of our fasting in spite of our prayers in spite of our giving the greatest weapon of mass destruction for this generation right now is a corrupted heart and let me tell you when it has to do with the issue of the heart you've heard me tell you there are no champions there we have to all come together and cast our crowns before the highest royalty we are done before his royal majesty we cast our crown before the highest royalty we are undone before the glorious majesty you know as i 
I'm preaching this message now. I can imagine Smith Wigglesworth listening to us. Apostle Babalola is hearing this and saying, Apostle, tell them when our move came, we never believed that there would be another move. We saw prophecy. We saw healing. These were men that would speak to dead bodies. E.W. Kenyon would look at a dead body and just eye contact. The bones will correct back and it will come back to life. These men saw power. They had revelations. They had grace. Now our generation, miracles like never before. Power like never before. Grace like never before. You want to see men God has helped? Look at our generation. You want to see men of fire? Look at this generation. You want to see men who have access to the eyes of the spirit? Look at this generation. You want to see men of diligence and stamina and stature? I have met men who prayed and fasted for 400 days non-stop. I have met men who locked themselves, no food, no water in a room, seven days dry. You talk of stamina. Rich, young ruler. Man of God, I know you came here because you are trusting God for increase in your prayer group. Maybe you are starting and you are not evil. You have come to honor the anointing to receive and you will receive. But please hear me. There are many people who are discouraged today. They cannot sleep. You ask them why. They will say, I don't want to remain small. It is not wrong. But if we are not careful, what happens then? Because the Bible says, everyone who seeks finds. This is a prophetic message to the body of Christ. A time will come when the average member in the church in Nigeria will have revelation enough to become a general overseer. The extent of light, the internet has made light available. And let me tell you, there is an implication to having knowledge. Knowledge cries for expression. By the time an usher is already prophesying like a geo, by the time an usher can lay hands on the sick and lift people out of the wheelchair. Something will be crying in that usher for greater expression than just telling people, come and sit down. Church in Nigeria, church in Africa, this is a prophetic end time message. There is a generation that has finally gotten it right. We've gotten it right by our commitment and our determination to master the principles of the spirit. We have gotten it right in the place of prayer. We have gotten it right in the place of fasting, consecration. Finally, a generation determined to be men of character. Finally, a generation determined to be men of fire. However, let us come before the rabbi and he looks at us and says, you have done well. You have kept the law. You have done everything. You have vowed that you are going to do ministry with integrity, business with integrity. You have vowed that when you get to a political office, there are men who have vowed that they will not touch one naira of government money. And even when they had opportunity to be billionaires, people insulted them and said, you are stupid. They truly did not touch one naira. This is a special generation with a level of results like we have not seen. But please hear me, lest we have the audacity and the pride to look back and clap for ourselves before it is time. The master still has a message for us tonight. One thing thou lackest. O rich young ruler man of God. O rich young ruler politician. O oh, rich young ruler breadwinner of your family. O oh, rich young ruler entrepreneur. O oh, rich young ruler father. O oh, rich young ruler mother. O oh, rich young ruler apostle and prophet and teacher. Your heart is the message the Holy Spirit is speaking right now. Somebody sent me a text and said, what kind of man are you? That you begin to speak and people are shouting and flying under the anointing let me tell you this 
because that person desires that realm, he will press with hunger. And one day, everyone that seeketh, find them. What is going to happen to the church when everybody understands prayer, understands fasting, understands the word of God. You think what will happen is a revival, but let me tell you to first start as a revival and then our heart condition will start causing trouble. There will be jealousy in at a rate you have never seen. There will be envy at a rate you have never seen. Prophet fighting prophet, apostle fighting prophet, bank fighting bank, a tech giant fighting tech giant. And before you will know it, one something that was a beautiful move will now become an issue of camp, an issue of individuals, an issue of empire until another generation writes a book about us and says the incomplete generation. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Is God speaking to someone? Hear me. The rich young ruler in spite of his riches, in spite of his dominion over time through the mastery of the laws of life, in spite of the influence being a ruler, he was able to kneel down before Jesus. What greater expression of completeness? When you see Joshua Selma kneel down in spite of what God is doing, should you not conclude that this guy is flawless, he has gotten it? Uh -uh. Not before the master, maybe before men, maybe before nations, maybe before kings, but before the master, he will look beyond your knees and look at your heart and he will see that in spite of the fact that you are sincere, oh Joshua Selman, let's do this hard thing. Who knows? Hmm. <laughs> the disciples followed Jesus with passion. You will look at the disciples and say, what zealous people. While they were following their hearts, were talking. I hope we are arriving somewhere that we are going to enjoy. One day, the disciples started getting angry because Jesus was teaching all of them. They were learning. Then he took Peter, James, and John. Is it not in your Bible? Up the Mount of Transfiguration. I'm sure the remaining disciples started grumbling. And saying, come on, this Jesus, I don't understand what he's doing. Peter, James, and John. The other, way, the other day we saw the mother of James and John. Remember? But he said, yes. And now he has taken them up. So we are the ones who are non-entities. Let's go and perform miracles. And they went and saw somebody who was deaf and dumb. Instead of them to look for a general case that they look for something that hard, deaf and dumb. Epileptic, in fact. That is the implication of light without room for expression. One day, time will come, you will tell somebody, raise offering, or I mean, pray for offering for two minutes. The level of light in them is too much. As soon as they stand, they are seeing something, and it will become a one hour conference. It may not be that the person is insincere, it's that the level of revelation is so much. A time will come, it will no longer be preaching, it will be discussion. Because as you are sharing it, the person listening to you is also bringing another revelation. That is the time when the state of our hearts will be revealed. At a time when you no longer need to tell anybody, yes sir. Because you too, you are an authority in your own regard. Yes sir now can be a false sense of humility. Because we are forced to learn by reason of the absence of light. And the obvious need to grow more. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a man of God here, please hear me. An apostle, a prophet, a, a pastor, a teacher. You're a man of God in the making. You're a businessman. You're one person who you know that destiny has held your hands. Please listen to what I'm telling you. The man speaking to you is not stupid. I may not know everything, but I can tell you I've worked with God a bit. I will search for you and i will find you i will find you with all my heart 
Lord, I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. I will lift my voice to you in worship. I will worship. Please hear me. This is one of the greatest blessings of the secret place. The secret place in this generation will become our ultimate place of safety. Please listen to me. When you get too busy for the secret place, no matter how accomplished you are, that which comes upon all men by reason of time and chance will veto your speed, will veto your might, will veto your wisdom, will veto your understanding, will even veto your skill, will even veto your eternity consciousness and bring you down the way of those who you have seen and learned lessons from. The secret is not what we do. The secret is where we stay. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That when men celebrate you and after great and mighty exploits, you run quickly to that secret place and say, Lord, from June till now, you have increased me 10 times. From June till now, the prophetic has multiplied upon my life. From June till now, I have seen the healing anointing in such proportions. From June till now, you have increased my church. You have increased me in prosperity. From June till now, I have employed 1,000 more people in my company. From June till now, I have received five, six global awards. But what do you have to say about me? Not what I am doing, me. And God will look at you and say, my dear son, my dear daughter, thank you for honoring me and coming. The rich young ruler was wise. When he saw Jesus, he ran and he said, good master. I am talking about eternity. I don't want to live a vain life, but vet me. And he said, go and sell. You, you know how to buy, but you must know how to sell. To sell means to part ways. That you can have a billion naira, a billion dollars in your account, and it is there, but you never allow it to get to your heart. I know you will say amen. Let me tell you, you do not have the power to create that kind of separation until God himself helps you. There is a kind of circumcision you cannot do for yourself. It is God that does that circumcision. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, oh Lord, my God, in your presence, that's where I belong. I am seeking your face, touching your grace. In the clefts of the rock, in your presence, oh God. Let's find somewhere to pray. So test number one, go and sell all you have and give to the poor. That means always test the state of your heart by your willingness to lose everything you have. Not losing what you have, but the willingness. Can I lose what God has given me and still be happy? Can I part ways with that influence? Can I part ways with that realm? If I do not have an invitation for one whole year, will I still love God? Go and sell all you have and give the poor. And then number two, come to me, take up the cross and follow me. That is the second test. What does that mean? Submitting to the leadership of Jesus through the Spirit. Let me tell you this, please look up. I can tell you by experience and I can tell you from the integrity of God's word. When you are rich, young, 
and with influence. The kind of pressure that is on your life, it makes the leadership of the Holy Spirit unnecessary because you are surrounded by results. Are we together? You are surrounded by results that is almost like you have a Midas touch. Anything you touch, you have influence enough to make it right, even if it is wrong. If the Holy Spirit today is not directing me to call a conference tomorrow, and I say, Koinonia, we are gathered here tomorrow for a special service tomorrow. You will come because influence is a force. Are we together? You will be surprised. It will go like wildfire across the nations. There are people who will travel because of this announcement and come. And while we are there, God will move to honor the sincerity of those who obeyed me, believing I had God. But it is between me and God to know what he said. That's why he said, take up your cross. He didn't say go. I know you have sold everything, but follow me. There are two things that will stand before you when you become rich, young, and a ruler. It and him. It represents the path of continuous progress. Him represents the path of the spirit. I can tell you this. One of the greatest danger that our generation stands to face is the pressure of motion, the pressure of activities, the pressure of movement. Because you see, influence comes with a burden. The burden is that there is an expectation from people that you are always doing something. And many pastors, many leaders, many people today have aborted the potential to hear God and walk with what God is saying out of pressure to say, I must do something. Let it not look like my ministry is quiet. I'm saying this with every sense of love. Let it not be that my business is quiet. I hear that people are doing charity and they are building hospitals and schools. Let me also do it so that I don't edge myself out of relevance. And there are people who are in financial troubles today. There are people today who are in emotional troubles because the grace to support an agenda was not given to them. There are people today who have not been strengthened to the level to hold a healing and a deliverance meeting. And out of pressure, they held all kinds of meetings and almost half of the people who came left oppressed. Because when you don't understand the dynamics of freedom, my greatest fear is for those who look up to us my greatest fear is for those who look up to us because they respect us and they honor us so much they will do anything they see us do because the results are so glaring and are so powerful so in honor to our sacrifice and our determination anything at all if I lift my leg and I put it here Soon somebody will snap it and you see him say, Oh God of Joshua Selman, I don't know what is it, the mystery behind this leg. Do it, oh God. And by the time someone falls under the anointing based on that thing, it does not mean God is accrediting what happened. It may be a different dynamic that produced that result. We will idolize that experience. I'm saying this, this is an apostolic and a prophetic message. This is the reason why any man of God, I can tell you, any businessman, anybody that God has helped to be a representation of this status, rich, young ruler, your greatest prayer right now should not be more power. Your greatest prayer right now is spirit of the living God. Guide me. Help me. The power of God only remains within the jurisdiction of the will of God. Please hear me. The power of God was mandated to only function within the jurisdiction of the will of God. Outside of the will of God, what you will meet is an aberration and a corruption of power. Hallelujah. Many people in our generation today will not go and get power from the devil again. A generation has made that mistake and we have seen it. So many people will not do it again. But we are doing another kind of error. You look down on me because I came for a meeting and nobody fell. See me after seven days. 
oh God, I, I'm, this embarrassment cannot be. It has to stop. And while we are doing that, God is saying you are doing something correct, motivated by a heart that is not sincere. Rich, young ruler. One thing thou lackest, that you come before his presence. It was also the mistake that happened with Mary and Martha. Remember, when Jesus went to Bethany, Martha was busy protecting her reputation. She was so conscious of carrying the semblance of a virtuous woman. Martha did not want Jesus to say, you are not a virtuous woman. Shame on you. I came to your house and you could not serve me. So she was running to do Proverbs 31. Is Proverbs 31 not a good thing? And then Mary sat down carelessly. You would have looked at Mary and said, you see, you are a foolish girl. May God pray that God will give you a husband with this kind of attitude. And Martha was angry that Jesus seemed to focus on Mary. And she came and said, Jesus, why are you behaving like this? You are the one spoiling this, our children. I'm trying to train her to become a virtuous lady. And he said, no, Martha, your action looks like you are zealous, but your motive is wrong. It is your reputation you are protecting, not that you want to honor me. You are upset and you are troubled about many things. Mary's issue was just one of the many things. This motivation is not about Mary. It is your passion and pressure to defend your name as a virtuous woman. It says one thing is needful, 42. And Mary has chosen that. And it cannot be taken away from her. What has she chosen? That I value the presence of God and the vetting that happens more than protecting my reputation. That means I rather be misunderstood by the world and have a standing with God that I love him. Than to throw away my passion for God and try to protect and, and stage manage my reputation. To make sure that you have a good name and then you do not have a testimony with God. Please listen to me. Rich, young ruler. You are a generation that God is speaking to. You have done well. Lord, I have kept the law. I am a man of prayer. I am a man of consecration and sacrifice. I am a man of giving. I am a man of skill. I am a man of wisdom. I am a man of strength, you may say. I am even a man who is not mundane in my thinking. I am always eternal. Well done. Thou hast done well. The Bible says Jesus looked at him and loved him. That means what he did was worthy of commendation. But here, he brought two tests to reveal the one thing that thou lackest. Test number one pathways with everything you have and let me see if what remains of you will still make you love me and seek me pathways with the power pathways with the reputation pathways with the influence pathways with the increase pathways with the money pathways with the awards pathways with the names will you still be a lover of God if nothing else stands what happens to you if you lose the job i know you can easily come and testify i've never loved the lord like now you are right who would not love the lord when double promotion came in one week but if suddenly you hear that something happened and they just downsized people that was a test satan came and stood before god and said take away everything job has and he will curse you let me tell you where the stamina of the believer resides when your commitment and your passion and love becomes unbending regardless what happens ah job impressed god though he slay me yet will i trust him and the wife looked at him and i believe it was the spirit of the devil that spoke through her do you still hold on to your integrity? He said, why do you look like one of these foolish women? Hear me. If you lose your job, will you still love him? Man of God, if you have to close the church, will you still love him? What is the basis of your pursuit for prayer? Pursuit for fasting? Is it power? Is it relevance? Or is it your hunger to know him? Are you ready to submit to the leadership of the spirit 
or you are ready to submit to the pressure of a generation just because you are anointed and full of the spirit does not automatically mean start a church just because you are anointed and powerful and prophetic does not automatically mean there are many good things that are not consistent with the will of God. I made a vow in my life and in this ministry that as much as God grants me grace, I will never find myself in any ministerial activity that God did not direct. Mm -mm. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Are we together? I told you how many times people have done all kinds of nice things, what you will jump at, and I go back to God, Lord, where are you in this? Because you see, following him demands setting your gaze at him, no matter what it is. You don't follow a man looking backward. You don't follow a man looking sideways. Ask Peter what happened when he took his eyes away from Jesus. He started sinking. The secret to our standing and walking on water is not our power. It's because our eyes remain on him. Please hear me, Koinonia. This ministry is standing today not as a reflection of a man's intelligence. Look at me. This is all of me. You would, be, you, would not, you would not be fair to yourself to actually believe unassisted by the Spirit you can produce this result. You see, we are not ashamed to say it. But I tell you sincerely, rich young ruler, we need to be careful. Following Jesus comes with a cost. The first cost is your ego. The second cost is your plans. You must be willing to tie your plans tie your ego, tie your reputation and say, Lord, if it is for you, this is it. If God speaks to you now, as much as people are running out of this country and as much as people have been encouraged to not run out of this country, for some of you, the will of God is that soon you'll be out of this country. You better don't say, well, I don't want to be controversial and then you don't go anywhere and sit down in Nigeria and die there out of the will of God. The secret is not going out of Nigeria or remaining. The secret is listening to the good shepherd. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. That is going to be the secret for a generation that stands. Lord, I love you enough. I'm not involving you in my life. My life is yours. I'm not involving you. That means you are living your life and when you see the need for God, you say, Jesus, where are you? Oh, Holy Spirit, you are the one who represents him. Oh yeah, come, I need you here. What do you think we should do about this? Okay, left, thank you. You can wait, I will need you some, no. Spirit of God, you brought me to Abuja. What is the next thing to do? And the Holy Spirit will say, for the next four months, do not do anything, don't honor any ministration just stay with me and while that happens that is the time you will have the biggest opportunities somebody will come and say i want to fly you to the ends of the earth priority services and you think about it you think about your mother who has suffered you think about your loved ones you think about your life that can change just when you want to do that they will tell you a magazine wants to interview you just when you want to do that they will tell you a, a particular global television station wanted to put my messages you know and and when they reached me i told them oh this is a very wonderful gesture i appreciate it would you give me some time to pray about it and i remember talking with one of them and the shock on you know his face pray about it this kind of opportunity yes sir pray about it i had barely gone to god to pray when i had clearly not this time it is within my power to make great when it is time I will, and, and that's how I politely said, well, I, I really respect this, but I'm sorry, we may have to turn it down. Can I tell you the truth? When you turn good things down, you are really a Christian. Someone can come and meet you right now and say, listen, I have a job for you. 1.5 million per month with a house in Maitama or Asokoro. And immediately you become the Holy Spirit and answer yourself. This is the will of God. And God says, no. So God, if it's not the will of God, why did you bring me this close? To reveal your heart to you. Man of God, pray over all your invitations. 
don't just jump at it because of the opportunity businessman you will see many deals common sense is going to be the greatest mistake of this generation using your brain to assume your brain is equal to the holy spirit the way of the spirit is very strange sometimes unpleasant but the end of it is peace and joy it says, as thou do not know the way of the wind, nor how bones are formed in her that is with child, so you do not know the way of the spirit. You have to be guided. Should I pursue? It says, pursue. The secret of powerful men in the Bible was not their inventions. It was their ability to stay. Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, I am not living here. You can call it delay. But if I do not sense you are with me in my journey to destiny, if I don't sense you are with me in this ministry and in this business, I am going nowhere. I am praying that God will raise a generation that can stay and remain until his voice directs you. That you can be on a job and while everybody's saying leave your job it's just 60,000 the Holy Spirit will tell you stay here for the next three years you are in this job the secret to the power and the might of God and the possibilities in this kingdom will be that we have submitted ourselves wholly to the voice of the Spirit take away the excessive dependence on common sense and logic it is going to be the unbecoming of many people. And as you rise, please do not allow the Holy Spirit to now become a luggage in your life. There is a path that seemed right unto a man and the end thereof. It is at the end you will know you have wasted your time. If the devil wants to deceive you, he will not show you hellfire. He will first show you what looks like heaven. It's as you are turning, it will turn to darkness. You will turn back and see that you cannot return. Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? I have used speed to redeem time. I am a young man. I have used might to fight a lot of battles. I know how to use the armor. I have used wisdom to put bread on my table and even the table of others. I have used understanding to build lasting wealth. I have used skill to attract favor from all and sundry. And including that, I have worked on my character. I know you are a master and I can kneel before you. I am not ashamed. In addition to that, I am also eternal in my view. I do not put my desires here. What do you have to say about me, Jesus? Well done, dear generation. This is my commendation to you. However, one thing thou lackest in spite of good preaching yes sir in spite of giving to the poor yes sir in spite of doing a lot of charity things yes sir in spite of traveling from nation to nation to preach the gospel yes sir in spite of meetings and gatherings yes sir your heart and your loyalty these are the two things that God is looking for from this generation your heart to be ever committed to Jesus above anything that he gives you and number two your unbending loyalty to Jesus the shepherd even through his spirit that if he says move left you move left with joy if he says move right this is a biblical index to measure maturity you find that in John 21 beginning from verse 15 16 17 he says Peter Simon Bajona lovest thou me more than this and he say yeah Lord I love you and then he says in verse 16 he says when thou I mean now 17 or thereabout he said when thou art young you are allowed to go wherever you want to go he says but when you become old someone will have to hold your hands and he will take you where you do not want to go the spirit of God how can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind how can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind his power at work in you 
Changing everything in obedience to Christ. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the Spirit. Don't you know in His hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little here, a little there, then your day will dawn. He's at work in you. Changing everything He's redirecting everything You're the Holy Ghost You're the Holy Ghost Spirit of the living God You're the Holy Ghost Scepter of the King of Kings Let me wrap up. Please write this down and then we'll pray. Ultimately, there are three things that represent the forces of eternal impact. Three motivations. A believer must assume that state and that posture in the spirit. Number one, a state where your heart is passionately in love with Jesus. Please write it down. Your first and principal motivation for everything that you do in life, if it will last and have value on earth and after this life, is your love and your passion for Jesus. Number two, your desire to see him glorified must be your second principal motivation. More than your desire for fame, more than your desire for success, more than your desire for achievement, more than your desire for a noble testimony. All these things are wonderful in themselves, except that if they become your foundational desires, you are already walking in corruption. Let me repeat, motivation number one, as the principal force that must drive the believer and the kingdom person is your passion for Jesus. At the back of everything you do with your life and in your life, it must be that you love the Lord passionately. Number two, your desire to see him glorified. 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 That I may increase, John said, decrease, that he might increase your desire to see him glorified. The third foundational motivation that makes your life and your living and your impact valuable and sustaining in this life and even in eternity is your desire, your passion to be a blessing to others. Your love for Jesus Christ, your desire to see Jesus glorified and your passion to be a blessing your passion to be a conduit bringing hope bringing healing bringing salvation bringing deliverance bringing meaning to the lives and destinies of people ladies and gentlemen show me a man who is motivated principally and foundationally by his passion and his love for Jesus. Number two, show me a man, a preacher, a businessman, a leader, a captain in industry, a politician who is motivated by his desire to see Jesus glorified. Show me a man who has the passion and the desire to be a blessing. Fulfilling Genesis chapter 12 from verse 2 and 3. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I have taught you that impact is one destiny at a time. When your life becomes the reason why someone is saved. When your life becomes a channel of hope. Channel of healing. It may be to one person at a time. It may be to the poor that you cannot see. Let me tell you. 
you are building up for yourself memorials in the heavens that you will be relevant both in this life and even after this life so my conclusion let me give a new testament perspective to what jesus christ was telling the rich young ruler young ruler you started well by walking with the word of god walking with mentorship and even the spirit of god and in so doing you found strength you found speed you found wisdom you found understanding you found skill and with these things you have traded and now you have come to a position of wealth you have gained time your destiny is opened up you are fulfilled you are living a life of exploits but redirect your motivation get back to a place where all your activities continue but whilst you continue all those activities get back to a place where you vet these tripartite motivations do i still love jesus am i still passionate about jesus am i still desirous to see him glorified and do i really have a desire to bless people man of god don't pray for members pray that god will give you genuine love for people because you can have members as a statistic to add to your ego i keep falling in love with you i keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again before you take any action before the fasting before the prayer before the charity, before the traveling for ministration, before doing whatever you do, get back to your closet and when you are in his presence, ask these three questions. Do I truly love Jesus? Am I motivated by my love for Jesus or my desire to be successful or my desire to be famous? All those other desires only find their place when these tripartite motivations are in place. If you have not written it, I will recap it again. You have to write it. Number one, your love and your passion for the Lord Jesus Christ. You must love Jesus with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That's what Jesus taught. You must love him more than fame, more than increase. You must love him more than ministry. Your love for him is what should motivate your fasting. Your love for him is what should motivate your Bible study. Your love for him is what should motivate your opening the church. Is what should motivate your giving. Your love for him is what should motivate your desire to be known. To give you a greater opportunity to reveal his love. And then number two, to see him glorified. To see him glorified. To see him glorified. And let me tell you the truth. If you desire to see Jesus glorified, it will cost you your own reputation. There are times you will have to choose between you lifted and him lifted. I pray that when life offers you those options, in a hurry and without thinking twice, you will say like John the Baptist, that I may increase so that he will, that I may decrease so that he will increase. Jesus glorified. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life, in my life, be glorified. one your love for Jesus number two your desire to see him glorified number three 
your desire to be a blessing to others. Can I tell you, one of the noblest way to live is to make your life count as far as adding value to lives are concerned. People don't care what you know until they know how much you care. People don't care whether you pray or fast or speak Greek or Hebrew. They don't care whether you are Apostle Joshua Selman. They don't care whether it is Koinonia. Once it is an oasis spilling out the river of love, passion, hope, that someone can come to you when they are discouraged and say, I knew that if I meet you, my life will change. I knew that if I meet you, my business will change. That your life will become, it's, it's, like, it's like an oasis in the desert. People can run to you and come and say, listen, let us come to the house of God. It is my prayer for Koinonia that it will not just be that this is a place of revelation or this is a place of power, miracles, healing. Thank God for all of these things. The noblest testimony that I desire, not only for my life, but for this great ministry that God has so highly honored, is that we love Jesus Christ passionately and truly, that our desire is to see him revealed and glorified from this nation to the ends of the earth. And then finally, to see that within the time that God has given us, the privilege of life, we are able to impact people I am very global in my thinking, but God is giving me a new orientation. I am very personal right now in my impact. As much as I think globally, I talk to the family. My joy is one life at a time. Trying to change 5,000 people at once is going to waste your time. Converge your energy and change one person and you have affected 5,000 people in one person. There are many people who want to change the world and they've not changed their own families. There are, have you seen that? Historically, there are people like that, preachers. Their own families can be dying, dying of hunger, dying of whatever it is, and they are changing the whole world. You change the world by changing a life. And let me tell you this, especially for our generation that is obsessed with increase, we want to show that many, many people have been impacted. I submit to you as one who has been privileged to experience different levels of increase and honor. I can tell you with every sense of humility, at the end of your life, it's not a crowd that will clap for you. It's the life that has been changed that will remember you. A crowd is a big risk. They will clap for you and say crucify him the next moment but one life you focus on maybe god is speaking to someone right now you are trying to change the world change the world by changing that little girl in your environment start paying her school fees pray in tongues with her while you are praying raise that girl and let her go to school and graduate in the university turn her into a weapon in the hand of god and release her towards a great destiny you change the world when you stand before jesus the same way the man who preached in a crusade with thousands of people you will also stand with them with that one life jesus was dying let me listen listen before you clap Jesus was dying for the whole world, but he turned to one man by his side. And it was as though he forgot that we were all there too. Would you be distracted by one man when you are focused on the impact of the whole world? But he still turned to that one man and he said, this day you will be in me, with me in paradise. Look at the nature of Jesus' impact. He will preach in a crusade of 5,000 people and then go to a woman by the well. He will preach, he was on his way to making impact at a crusade. And then he saw a tax collector who because of his height and size climbed a tree and said, no, I honor you, come down, I've changed, I'm going to your house. And in his mind, the crusade and the meeting of the tax collector carried equal value. We must redefine our idea of impact. I'm saying this finally so that we will manage our concept of impact because if they tell you who are the men of God or who are the businessmen that are making impact and changing the world, chances are you say they are the Joshua Selmans. They are traveling from nation to nation. I'm giving you a new orientation, dear generation. No, impact is one life at a time. 
The person who was changing Renard Bonke did not know he was influencing Africa. The person who was changing Billy Graham did not know he was rewriting history. Listen to me. History has been written and is being read, but history is still being made. The same energy I would give a stadium of people preaching is the same energy I would give a young lady, a young gentleman, if I have the opportunity to talk. I will not say the spotlights are not there, the ushers are not there, there is no honorarium. Mm -mm. Jesus communicated the same passion with the woman at the well. When Nicodemus came to him by night, do you know the entire John 3.16 that is about the greatest verse for the salvation of the believer? It did not come on a crusade ground. It came from a discussion in the night with one person. The understanding of worship in spirit and truth did not come as the sermon on a crusade ground. It came as a discussion between Jesus and an outcast, a prostitute supposedly. What will holy Jesus be doing with an outcast forgotten by society? There are some of you, you may never have the opportunity to stand on the crusade grounds. There are some of you, you may never have koinonia with thousands of people like this. For you, God will give you one life and say, this is your project. Make sure this child does not fail. He may be an orphan, but you have a responsibility to train him because this is the gentleman who is going to change Ethiopia. This is the gentleman who is going to bring revival across Europe. And while mama, while you are cooking for that gentleman, young lady, while you are helping him do his assignment, you think you are just helping one person. While you are watching the Joshua Selmans in with a crowd of people, you are feeling bad that you are not doing ministry. You do not know you are changing a whole nation in one man. Before the word is lightened upon Israel, he sends the word to Jacob. Rebecca. You are not carrying twins. You are carrying two nations. Mama, God gave you three children. No, God gave you the secret, the keys to the revival of three continents in three people. Can I tell you this? Whether you have the privilege to talk to 10,000 people, 1 million people, whether you have the privilege of having thousands of people follow you online, millions of people, whether you have the privilege to have access to deep dimensions of revelation and illumination, whether you are known and called and celebrated or not, the most important thing is to be motivated by these tripartite motivations. I repeat one last time, your love for Jesus, number two, your desire to see him glorified number three your sincere love for men don't use men love men pastors don't use members love members don't manipulate people to build an empire for yourself love people sincerely love is painful love is costly but love is powerful before we rise to pray while you are seated i just feel stirred in my heart I want to make an altar call right now while you are seated. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, there is no delay. I, I need to run to Jesus right now. God is speaking to you. I want you to leave your seat quickly and come and stand here right now. There is no need wasting time. There is no need lying to yourself. God is speaking to you that you need to rededicate your life or make a fresh commitment, whether you are inside or outside. You are saying, Apostle, sincerely, I cannot say I've been motivated by these three tripartite motivations. I have been, been playing church. I have been playing all kinds of things. I need to make my ways right. I'm going to count one to five. When I count five, I'm going to begin to pray. I want you to leave your seat and come and stand here right now. This is a family of faith and a family of love. Come. One. Those who are coming, please let them come. If they are coming from other places, I want you to run. Two. Motivated by your love for Jesus. Motivated by your desire to see him glorified. More than a church being built. More than a bank being built. More than a company, a conglomerate being built. Please come.
the desire to love men some of you hate men you only use men because they are a necessary tool come it's time to give your life to Jesus to see you high and lifted up you're shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing Ladies and gentlemen, I salute you for this noble decision. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays to know him. And it pays to live for him. If you are joining them, please join them quickly. And all who are making this decision for the first time, online, following from across the globe, this is what this is all about. It's more than just a galore, an advertisement of a man of God and a church and a ministry. Believe me when I tell you, if you are motivated by this tripartite motivation, oh dear generation, then you can be a rich, young ruler that will last indeed. Lift your hands and say this after me, all of you who are in front. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you and I need you in my life. From tonight, I ask you to save me, to help me. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight until forever, I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for these precious people that you have brought. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the Lord will bless you. I declare your sins forgiven by the authority of Scripture. And I declare that you begin a new walk with Jesus today. I declare that you will love him more than anything and more than anyone. That nothing in this life will ever be able to take his place in your life. May the Lord honor you and grant you the desires of your heart. I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I commend you to the word of God. May you be established in righteousness. And that you go from glory to glory and grace to grace. In Jesus matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please, I would like you to look left. You will see a group of counselors waving their hands. All of you in concert, would you walk to them? They will just have a word with you very quickly. And then you'll be back to your seat in the name of Jesus. Let's celebrate them as they go. We are going to pray now. Just two prayer points. And then we are done for the night. Thank you for your patience. While our people go to see the counselors, let's all rise as we pray. I want you to participate in this prayer. Just two prayer points for the night. After such a powerful teaching, we need to pray. Everyone here is in the similitude of the rich young ruler. For some, you are about to be the rich young ruler. For others, you are already the rich young ruler. God has granted you grace. You have accessed the keys and the forces of the spirit. You have been able to redeem time. And God has granted you influence, capacity to do exploits. You are even eternal and think eternity in your heart. The first prayer point is you're going to cry that God will vet your heart and will purify it. That every attachment to material things, to money, to reputation, to titles, every mundane pursuit, every earthly thing that has stolen your heart and your passion, I like you to pray that it will be far from you. Open your mouth and pray. I hope someone is praying. Search my heart. Search my heart, oh God. Search my heart and try my thoughts. And see if there is any evil way. Then lead me to the way everlasting. In the name of Jesus. 
separate my heart from material wealth separate my heart from fame separate my heart from the desire for increase as against my love for God these things are wonderful but I pray that a circumcision happens in my heart is someone praying right now let there be a divine supernatural circumcision in the name of Jesus purify my motive circumcise my heart all the cares of this life that keep motivating me to do spiritual activities but not motivated by my love for Jesus let it be pruned oh God edit my passion let Jesus be restored to my life as the epicenter the motivation for ministry the motivation for impact the motivation for prayer the motivation for fasting more than the desire to be famous more than the desire to be wealthy more than the desire to make or preserve a name more than the desire to have reputation someone is praying that forever our lives will be pruned and motivated by this singular desire that we love Jesus we love Jesus hallelujah final prayer point for tonight and I want you to pray this with all your heart I like us to pray and resist the pressure of walking in the flesh especially in this end time holy spirit i restore your leadership to my life i decree and declare that once again your voice will become the principal um, motivation for my direction you are my shepherd i may have ignored you as my shepherd but i call you again willingly consciously deliberately shepherd of my life shepherd of my destiny shepherd of this church shepherd of this ministry shepherd of your prayer group shepherd of your business shepherd of nigeria oh pray for nigeria in the name of jesus based on the prophetic unfoldings in this nation spirit of the living god we pray we restore the ministry of the spirit lead us as individuals as corporations as ministries as families as men and women of god as business people may we value the excellency of the leadership of the holy spirit we follow you jesus we follow you jesus if you lead to the left to the left we go if you lead to the right to the right we go if you say stand still we stand still if you say run we run we depend on your voice we depend on your leadership we take up the cross and we follow you in the name of Jesus father I pray for the body of Christ Lord I pray particularly for our precious generation we thank you for stretching your hand so mighty upon us thank you for the apostolic across Nigeria Africa and the world thank you for the prophetic thank you for the evangelistic thank you for entrepreneurs Lord, you have raised this generation. You have granted us access to high level, never seen before dimensions of spiritual illumination. You have given us the eyes to be able to see the mistakes of the generations past, to see the scars even of the fathers. And Lord, you have granted us the stamina, the discipline and the grace to make adjustments. And now you have brought out of us a dexterous generation in the similitude of the rich young ruler man of speed man of might man of wisdom 
men of understanding men of skill men who are even eternity driven but Lord I pray like you have revealed to us tonight this one thing that we still lack this one thing that we still lack that desire to love you sincerely the desire to live our lives and be motivated by the desire to see you glorified and the desire to love humanity and to extend our life to impact someone one life and one destiny at a time we pray that this one thing we lack by the help of the spirit may our generation not miss it Lord we thank you for the fathers who have mentored us and continue to mentor us we thank you for the saints and the patriarchs dead and alive men who have opened up their scars and their wounds we have seen their mistakes we have seen their shortcomings you have granted us the grace to climb upon their sacrifices to where we are today we stand before you Jesus like the rich young ruler and we confess that there is this one thing that we lack our heart condition alongside our desire to submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit we repent oh God as a generation we repent as a people we repent as men of God we repent as business people we repent as kingdom leaders we repent and we cry and ask you by your mercies by the covenant of eternal mercy that you had with David in the name of Jesus we pray show our generation mercy may we we not miss it in the name of Jesus and Lord I pray for every man of God every woman of God every captain of industry politician a person of influence I pray in the name that is above all names grant us a grace to be able to fulfill that which you mandated the rich young ruler to do what he could not do may our generation do we declare afresh our love for you Jesus we declare before the nations from Nigeria to the ends of the earth across Africa Europe the United States and all the other continents we declare that we are a people who are motivated by our love for you we declare that we are a people who truly desire the entire scope of our lives and our pursuit is to see Jesus glorified and then oh God we declare that we love the brethren we declare that we love the body of Christ we declare that we love this nation we declare that we love Africa we declare that we love the world and Lord we obtain grace from you to spend our lives impacting lives becoming voices of hope voices of healing voices of deliverance voices of prophecy voices of salvation in the name of Jesus thank you for tonight for in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray and I declare over you you are blessed by the power that raised Christ from the dead every key of the kingdom that you need to access to rise to the position of rest round about I declare your eyes find access to that light hear me for anyone here who is still suffering spiritual bankruptcy financial bankruptcy you have not yet learned the ways of the spirit you have not yet mastered the laws of life that elevate men to positions of value and relevance I pray for you by the power that raised Christ from the dead that the same grace that raised that young man to become a rich young ruler may that same grace open you up to the keys of the kingdom and for those that God has helped to attain unto a position of stature and grace commanding fearful results already across the nation I pray for you that in the name of Jesus Christ you will seek Jesus like the rich young ruler sought him and that when you find him the final prayer I pray for those who have found him and value his presence so much that you will not waste your time and the value of his presence but that you will allow his presence to change your heart you will allow his presence to cultivate within you the desire to submit to the ministry of the Holy Spirit 
I bless you and I declare that this week for you is a week of blessings it's a week of recovery it's a week of increase it's a week of enlargement in the name of Jesus because your heart is stayed upon the Lord may he open to you the treasures of greatness may he open your ears and your eyes to see and hear in the name of Jesus Christ I bless you with the blessings of heaven may the blessings speak over your life I pray for your prayer life greater fire I pray for your word life greater fire I pray for your passion for the things of God greater fire but I pray that your motivation will ever be Jesus and nothing less nothing more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and everything you desire to see God do in your life this week I release my faith with you return with testimonies for in the mighty the matchless and the blessed name of Jesus we pray together let's share the grace in fellowship thank you for your patience the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain